So the question today, reading this off the screen, Hi Harley, I need some tips regarding muscle building. I'm trying to gain 20 to 30 pounds of muscles, not suggesting the layout of drug, caffeine, addict, high on the hate human growth hormone, etc. I weigh 140 pounds, standing six foot tall. I don't see many 811ers heavy on muscles. What kind of training program do you recommend? What should be the frequency and time of workout? Thanks, keep rocking. Well, if you want to build muscle, it's just like cardio fitness. It takes time. I don't know anybody who's really like world-class level who's at least had eight to ten years of training. Like all my elite level runner friends, they've all had at least eight to ten years of running training, cycling the same. Um, bodybuilding friends of mine, ten years plus really. I mean, if you look at even my friends who are taking steroids, not I don't recommend taking steroids, just to be clear on that one. My friends taking steroids who are really strong and, and muscular versus just puffy, they've been at it for like at least 10 years on the steroids and stuff like that. It takes a long time. Sure, you can do a short course of steroids and just puff up, but you know, you look muscly, but you it just be sort of water retention. But I'm talking like the, the, the full on, like, you know, competition level bodybuilders, you know, drug style takes at least 10 years. Look at those guys on the internet, but no one just comes at it from a, a couple of months. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people in the paleo primal world that say if you do the 30-day primal program or whatever, you'll, you'll, you'll turn from a couch potato into like some Greek Adonis or uh, some competition-level bodybuilder <laughs> as long as you're taking a primal prey protein card or whatever. So it takes time. It takes a lot of years. So 20 to 30 pounds, we're talking one pound per month of pure muscle. I'm not talking fat or creatine retention or salt retention. I'm talking pure muscle one pound a month is the standard if you're like a hardcore drug using steroid popping bodybuilder who's getting the calories, getting the sleep and training hardcore. So one pound a month if you're doing the drugs, say 20 pounds to 30 pounds this person's asking. So that's 20 to 30 months if you're on the hardcore steroids. So to go from 140 pounds to 160 pounds, you're not going to look too much different. You look a, you know, a bit muscular, but you're not going to, you're not going to look like a bodybuilder. You're not, you're not going to look like a strong man. So it's going to take you at least five years to uh, to put on the you know the 50, 60 pounds to get the sort of wow that guy's a bit of a muscle head look. That's with steroids. That's with steroids, and I'm not promoting steroid use. So five years with steroids. So you put on the 50 pounds and make the big differences. If your genetics is more predisposed, you know, some people are genetically. Just, you know, some kids have just got bigger muscles and some kids more, look more like Kenyan marathons, things like that. So you've got different genetics there. So if your genetics is more like a marathon runner, then maybe having the, the goal of putting on the 20, 30 pounds of muscle is a realistic goal, 100%. But to look like a competitive level bodybuilder, if your genetics is like a marathon runner, I mean, you've got guys like Robert Cheek, his genetics is like a marathon runner, but he's like a competitive level natural bodybuilder. And it's taken you know, the years as well because this guy just does the hard work. You know, Robert Sheep is just a, he's a hard work ethic. The guy just doesn't do it for 30 days to give up. He's, he bangs it out for the decade. So definitely you can, you can work with your genetics. You can work with genetics 100%. So to answer the question, how long does it take to put 20, 30 pounds of muscle on Harley? It takes at least 20 or 30 months if you're on steroids, which I don't recommend. And people say, oh, but you know, I saw someone put on you know, 40 pounds in a couple of weeks. It's like, no, <laughs> you can put on retention and creatine and blood volume and bone density and stuff like that. But I'm talking pure muscle. I'm not talking someone who's had a past in bodybuilding and they do like a, you know, they go to cycling or do a fast or get into running and they drop all their muscle weight down and then they stop the running or the fast and start training again and eating properly and then put them up the size. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking like from someone who's never had, you know, strength before from going from zero to up here. That's gonna take the five, 10 years, 100%. It's like, people go, how can you run so fast on such field trainings? Because I've got a back end cycling, my VO2 max is already up in the 80s. So my running is really low training, but I've got a high VO2 max, so my progression's a lot quicker. But if I started running with a VO2 max around 30, and I'm 20 kilometers a week, then I'd be doing nothing. Because I've got a VO2 max of 80, 20 kilometers a week, which I ran last year, 22 k's a week, average, average something like that. That's going to provide the stimulus because we're going to get the VO2 max here. Yeah. So if someone's got the history of strength training and muscle development, 
and they're coming back, yeah, yeah, they can put on the 23 pounds a lot quicker than someone who's just coming from ground zero. So that's why we want to start our training today, I start our fitness lifestyle today, because people go, oh, when I, when I get time, you know, I can, I can build fitness up later on. It's like, it takes years, man, it takes decades. Cadell Evans, he won the Tour de France last year, first Australian ever to win the Tour de France. It took him 22 years to get to win the first Tour de France. It took him years to finish. It took him years to get on the team. It took him years for his team to, for his, once he got on, on that team to get chosen for the Tour de France. And then once he did the Tour de France, it took him years to finish it, and then it took him years to win it. 22 years in total. And people are like, oh, you know, like, I'll, I'll have a go, you know, I'll have a go. A couple of, what, yeah, six months, six months, I should be doing good. It's like the Raw Bras, you're nothing personal, it's Raw Bras, but they did this lifestyle for a couple of months and <laughs> they lost like fat and they, they think, oh, I lost muscle or whatever, they underrate or whatever they did. And then so they do it for a couple of months, they go, oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's like you've got to do the lifestyles for the years, man. You can't have the mindset of like, I want the results yesterday. I used to work in the bike industry. People would come in and spend, drop $10,000 on a bike. And I'd say, well, I mean, you don't have to spend that much money. You spend $2,000. It's just good. Like, no, I want to be really good. I'm like, yeah, but $2,000 bike is just as good, man. Like, ah. And then they come back a few months later. I go, oh, yeah, this, this bike's not that good, man. Ten grand. Yeah, it's not that good. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, I'm not beating on the mates. I'm like, how long have you been riding for? They're like, oh, I started this year. I started last summer. I'm like, how long have your mates been riding for? Oh, there's... I'm riding and such and such and such and such. I'm like, those guys have been riding for 10, 20 years, man. Or five years, eight years or more. You, just because you spend $10,000 on some program or some bicycle or some supplement program doesn't mean you're going to be like getting up there straight away. You know, you, people get suckered in by these little quick fix scams. Some from just sincerely, but sincerely wrong people. And some people from, you know, the hucksters. Won't name any names there. But it takes the time. And a lot of people go, oh, it's got, it takes too long. I'm going to try some other program. It's like, well, you're just going to merry-go-round and get suckered in by all the scams and all the, the paleo, primal, low-carb, whatever, fad diets. People just get suckered in and go, oh, I'll try this, I'll try that. And, oh, this doesn't work for a couple of weeks, I'll try that one. And they just, I call them diet jumpers. They just jump from diet to diet to diet. They have no basis of basic human physiology. They're always, you, go, you read their blog, they're trying something new next month or whatever. I'll try this, it didn't work, I'll do it, blah, blah, blah. And it, when you have a flaky attitude like that, you're not going to achieve much in life. You're going to have the conviction, the commitment. Otherwise, you just jump around. So how long does it take to put on the 20, 30 pounds, man? It takes years. It takes years to get the good results. And if people aren't prepared to put in the years of work and effort, then they're not going to get the results, man. And that's why you have people in cycling doing drugs to try and speed, speed up their progress, but it doesn't work that way. You still have to do the training, and then when you do the drugs, that complements each other. I don't promote drug use, as you were saying. You have newbies. I've had newbies taking an EPO and, and steroids and trying to keep up with me, and they improve a bit, but they burn out because their body doesn't have that fitness base. So if you've got the fitness base, then you can stack upon that, yeah? So people just got to understand that the training starts today. you just got to train consistently, if you want to become a bodybuilder, then you have to make all your friends bodybuilders. Go to the gym, hang out with the bodybuilders. Don't eat the shit they eat and take the steroids and that, but do the training they do, get the sleep, things like that. Avoid all the drugs and all the shit food, but train with people like that, like in cycling. Like, to be a good cyclist, I'm like, I'm just going to hang out with the fittest guys around, and I did that. And these guys were really great guys, they taught me a lot, and that's how I became a good cyclist, just hanging around good cyclists. You can't be a good cyclist or a good athlete if you're hanging around dickhead mates who are too fucking lazy to get off the couch. You got you can't fly like an eagle if you're hanging with turkeys. Sorry, turkeys. If you want to be good at sport, you've got to hang out with people that can kick your ass in your chosen sport. You want to be a good dancer, hang out with better dancers. You want to be a good runner, hang out with better runners. You want to be a good cyclist, hang out with better cyclists. You want to be stronger, hang out with stronger people. Don't hang around your family and the friends that just go, why are you going exercising again today? Or you're sweaty again and you eat too much and you do too much activity and what's wrong with sitting on the couch and fighting your life away watching Jerry Springer rerun? You've got to hang out with quality people. Who you hang around, who you become, whether you like it or not. We always raise the expectations of our peer group. I've been hanging out with some Kenyans in Bangkok here. <laughs> My running's improving. And I'm not even really training with them that much. I'm just hanging around them, just getting a vibe from them. And my running's just going up. And same in Adelaide, I hang out with some better runners than me. I'm just hanging around them, just their energy and their, their beliefs and their expectations. It just rises you up. 
So you've got to hang around better people. That's the number one rule. Even if, if you just live in a household with bodybuilders or cyclists, you're going to become better even if you don't train more because your mindset will just become better. It's all about the mindset as well. Consistency, training consistency, hang around people you want to become, get enough calories, get the sleep. The training program doesn't really matter too much because there's plenty of free programs in the net. They all work. They all work. So just do something today. Do realistic training. Don't overtrain. Train smarter versus harder. If you're sore, take a day off, things like that. Just ease into it as well. Ease into it. Hope to answer the question. It's a big answer, but it's a big discussion. I could go on and on about that. Bottom line is train consistently. Hang out with better people in your chosen sport. Get the early nights. Get the consistent calories in. If you want to be a big, strong, fit man, you've got to fucking pound the calories in. You've got to pound them carbohydrates in. Otherwise, you're going to be the 140-pound guy at the gym who looks like the marathon runner, which is fine, which is like me. But if you don't want to look like a marathon runner, you got to fucking eat like a fucking bodybuilder and, and chew those fucking calories, man. All my bodybuilder friends, 5,000, 10,000 calories a day. They're like, you know, they eat as much as cyclists, but they do a different training. So ease off the cardio. Cardio just strips you right down. If you want to get big, cut the cardio out. If you want to get lean and be a marathon runner, cyclist, cardio up. If you want to get big and strong, cardio down. I don't see people who are doing bench press competitions running 10K races. So cut out the marathon running, cut out the distance cycling, and uh, hang out with the bodybuilders. Thanks for watching.